these health aides that we're training, they're all young people. I've spoken to them several times now. Um, uh, to see these 18, 20 young people who are willing to learn these things. And, and when you're, I spent six years on the outer island. When you're on an outer island and you have a health aid there, um, and sometimes you don't have airplanes, the airplanes are down or you're on one of these islands that don't have an airport, those health aids are extremely important and they have to be really well trained. We have a, a woman named Dr. Ina, a Marshallese, training those people right now. And they're learning a lot. I, I've been down there. So the outer islands are really important. And like I said, the, the medical care out there, you have a little dispensary and it's going to be really hard when we, we actually to get back to the COVID thing. We want to immunize people on the outer islands, but you can imagine we have 29 atolls out here. And we have to be able to go out there and if it's two doses, logistically to send our teams out to do that is really challenging. So the, the single dose vaccine for outer islands would be perfect because yeah. we can go out and, and vaccinate people and then we're done. Yes. And thank you for that question, Philippe, because it points out that the Marshall Islands, you mentioned, Mr. Secretary, 29 atolls over a huge, probably half the size of the United States. Yeah. And that's the, when you when we hit had the dengue outbreak. That's the other thing we had to do. No one could go to outer islands. So this was like around Christmas time, and all these people. Christmas is a really big uh, holiday here, and we were just preventing these people from going out because we didn't want that disease on outer islands. And we did eventually. We just had to let people start going back, and we have had a few outbreaks on outer islands. But we send those nurse practitioners out there. It's almost like a medical SWAT team. And they put that down every time we've had a little outbreak on an outer island. We put it down every single time. How so do you really travel? How, how do you? How is the travel, uh, Mr. Secretary? What What do well, you use to travel? Well, we most of the islands, uh, outer atolls, have airports. But what you have to understand is there's a you have an atoll with a bunch of little islands, and so there's usually a center island where most people live. But then you have outer islands in the outer of the outer atolls. So to get to those people with regard to uh, medical care, you have to use boats. And we use, we've used boats to medevac people also, some of the atolls that are closer by. So it's boats and planes um, generally. That's really the only options we have. How important um, are, com are compact funds for, 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 the sec for the Ministry of Health? Compact funds are life and death, to be honest with you. They're absolutely necessary. The support the U.S. gives the Ministry of Health is absolutely critical, and we hope it continues. I know they're starting to renegotiate another compact with the U.S. Um, I was here for the very first compact vote. Um, Nam Atoll voted 100% to approve the compact. It was the only atoll in the Marshall Islands that did that. I don't know how that happened, but uh, we were really uh, proud of that. Um, I remember that vote. But uh, people in here have a, a really good relationship with the U.S. over... Uh, I think like 30% of our people actually live in the U.S. now. Um, so it's it's a really, really important relationship to us. 